One of the things I promised in my latest video on the 286 was to install some networking capabilities into it. So that means hooking up a network card, the appropriate cables to hook it up to other machines, dealing with all kinds of software issues, IRQs, IOs, dealing with other issues that are very specific to these low power, low memory devices, such as these out of memory errors that keep popping up. And last but not least, we need to find some other computers that we can in fact network with. And of course, these need to be also retro computers. Because we wanted to work with Windows 3.11 and Windows 98, so we need to set up all of these devices here and put them on a single network. But then I thought, why not do this first from the comfort of my cozy desk where I can do everything on my laptop, running different operating systems, configuring networks, and set up some connectivity between these virtual machines on one single laptop. Then I could really focus and zoom in on the specifics of each OS and the installations which are required before I move everything back to my garage and set up everything on physical devices. Which I will still do, obviously, just not in this video. So think of this video as a preparation for a next video where we will be looking at the physical hardware in more detail, but in this video we'll focus on the software. But let's start by taking a look at Oracle VirtualBox, the virtualization software we'll be using here. As you can see here, I already have a number of virtual machines defined in my VirtualBox. I'm going to be adding a new one here, and I'm going to call it MS-DOS YouTube. So this is a new virtual machine that will be created here. And as we do that, we need to configure stuff like the memory size, which I'm going to keep at 32 megs. We need to have a virtual disk here. The virtual disk will be dynamically allocated, but we only need very few megabytes. So I'm going to pick a 40 megabyte hard drive. And then our virtual machine is created. So let's start her up. And obviously this will not work because we don't have any bootable media at this point. So the virtual machine won't start. So let's look at the settings of our virtual machine. When we go to the system tab, we can see the memory that we have allocated. And on the storage tab, we can see the various storage devices associated with our virtual machine. So we have a floppy controller with an empty floppy, and we have our ID controller and a CD-ROM drive. So we're going to be inserting a disk into the floppy drive controller. And the way we do that is we start the virtual machine. And then we hit the little disk icon. Select choose disk image. And then we can navigate to our local hard drive and find the MS-DOS 6.22 disk number one image that we will be needing to start the setup. So if we now restart our virtual machine with the disk drive in place, you can see that it will launch into the MS-DOS setup program. And this is how you actually interact with uh, disk images and mount these disk images onto your virtual machine. One final thing that I wanted to show you here is the network tab of the virtual machine settings. By default, it will be a NAT network, but we need to change this to either a bridged adapter or an internal network if we want to have communication between the three VMs that we are about to create in this video. And we're going to start with MS-DOS 6.22. So the setup of MS-DOS can be done very easily in VirtualBox. You basically need three setup disk images in order to start the installation. The setup requires very little input from the user. Stuff like date, time, country, and an installation path is sufficient. And it will just go through the three setup disks that you need to provide. You can mount these disk images by clicking on the disk drive icon and just selecting a disk image like I'm doing here. So I'm selecting the second disk and then the setup can continue. We'll do the same for the third disk, and after that, the MS-DOS installation should be complete. So now it's time to remove our disk image from the virtual floppy drive, restart the computer, and look at our newly installed MS-DOS 6.22. Now to provide network connectivity in MS-DOS 6.2, we're gonna be using the Microsoft Network Client version 3.0. 
So we'll just mount that image here, go to the A drive and run the setup program. There is very little that is required as input. We just need to find an installation folder, which is typically the net folder. And then we need to select a network adapter. Several network adapters are supported out of the box with drivers being made available by the Microsoft Network Client software package. But in this case, we'll be needing a driver which is not uh, on the list below. So we'll need to select a disk image that contains the MS-DOS and this driver for a particular card. In VirtualBox's case, this is the Advanced Micro Devices PC Net Family card. After selecting the card, we will get this prompt where we can just hit enter and we will need to enter a username, which is actually like a computer name for this particular computer. So I'm just going to choose MS-DOS-622-VM as a computer name. Now we can change various options regarding to the setup. We can change the names. We've already set the user and the computer name and the word group. We can set other various options here that we won't go into right now. The network configuration where we see our uh, networking adapter and there's one protocol installed which is the IPX compatible transport. But we'll add an additional protocol which is called the Microsoft NetBuoy protocol which will enable us to share files from other uh, computers. Now note that we won't be able to share folders ourselves. We'll only be able to consume folders from other computers. So it will ask us for the OAM driver disk, which is the second disk of the Microsoft Network Client package. And after going through a couple of disk changes, the installation will be complete and we can reboot the computer. Now, as soon as we reboot the computer, we will see that the network card has been detected and various drivers will be loaded. Here, for example, because we've selected TCP IP in our protocol stack, it will try to get an IP address from a DHCP server. But what's also interesting here is that we get this there's not enough memory available error. Now for 386 and 486 machines this is not much of an issue as we can just enter in the config.sys we can load up the EMM386 uh, memory manager so that we can load certain drivers into the higher memory regions making sufficient conventional memory available for the networking drivers. So I'm just going to be adding the EMM386 and loading the device high of the networking stack. Save it and reboot the computer and the memory error should be gone. Note that if you are running this stack on very low constraint devices like a 286 with one megabyte or an XT machine perhaps with 640 kilobytes, you probably won't be able to run all of these networking protocols as you will run into these memory errors. Now it's also worth noting in that respect that the only protocol you need to do file sharing is the Microsoft NetBuoy protocol. What's also interesting to note here is that we need to provide a username password on the networking client. And it will also ask us to create this password list which will contain the password that we have entered just now. So this concludes our MS-DOS setup right now. So I'll be switching over to the another operating system, which is Windows for Workgroups 3.11, which is the software that will enable us to actually share drives and mount them on our MS-DOS environment. So to install Microsoft Windows for Workgroups 3.11, we need to have an MS-DOS installation first, and then we can mount the first disk of the Windows for Workgroups setup, which will launch into an MS-DOS based setup utility. And we'll go through the various disks, which will end up loading a graphical oriented setup where we first need to provide some personal information and then we'll continue with another round of disk swapping where we will just select disk images from our hosts hard drive mount them onto the a drive and then we can continue through all of them we don't need to have a printer for this installation so we will just continue the setup right now and reboot into our newly installed Windows 3.11 installation. And just look at that splash screen and the beautiful Windows 3.11 desktop here. But let's go into the networking setup where we will be installing the Microsoft network. So we'll hit the networks button, select the install Microsoft Windows network, 
we need to have a network driver installed. So we'll first add an adapter here. And again, we'll be loading up our uh, network disks that we used in the MS-DOS installation because it also contains a driver for Windows. And here you can see it has found our advanced micro devices network. We won't be worrying too much about these IO addresses and interrupt for the moment. By default, we will have two protocols installed, the Microsoft NetBuoy and the IPX SPX compatible transport with NetBIOS. Part of the setup also involves setting up a username and computer name. So the computer name now is the same as the username. So I'm just going to be changing that to something a little bit more meaningful. And then we can start the copying of all of the networking files. So for that, we'll be needing a couple of additional Windows disks. Disk 7 and Disk 8 of the Windows for Workgroups set of disks primarily contain all of the network related things. And after that has been installed, we can restart the computer and our networking stack should be enabled once we start Windows 3.11. So let me just log in. We'll be prompted to create a password list. Now, before we can start sharing files with others, we need to enable this option. So we'll hit the sharing button here. Select, I want to be able to give access to others to my files. Hit OK. And we'll need to do another restart just to enable the file sharing service. And after a quick restart, we can enter our file manager, select a folder that we want to share, go to the disk menu item, select share as, enter a name, path should be pre-filled, set the permissions, and once the little hand appears on the folder, the folder has been shared and can be accessed across the network. A final operating system that we'll be looking at is Windows 98 Second Edition, an operating system very popular with retro enthusiasts, especially when they have like Pentium, Pentium 2, Pentium 3 based machines. The installation is based off of a CD-ROM, so we'll just load up the CD-ROM image into our virtual box and we'll first set up our hard drive, rebooting again from the CD-ROM. This will allow us to then format the hard drive as we'll be using all of the available space on the hard drive. And then we'll be loaded up into the graphical user interface installation program of Windows 98, which is pretty straightforward, next, 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 finish type of thing. So it will install the standard components. We'll enter a computer name here, which is gonna be Windows 98 SE-VM. We'll be putting it into the work group going to add a little description here and then we can continue with the installation. So this brings back a lot of memories. I can't count the number of times I had to install this back in the day, but it was plentiful. <laughs> so yeah, it's really nice to see these screens back again, even if it is on a virtual machine. And after a restart, we again boot from the hard drive, see the iconic Microsoft Windows 98 splash screen, and then we can continue with the setup. We'll enter a name, a company, accept some license agreements, and then the installation will just continue. Lots of screens, lots of hitting next, restarts. And this should be the final leg of the Windows 98 installation as we're finishing off here. And a final restart will bring us into the Windows 98 desktop that we know and love so much, allowing us to uh, continue with the configuration of the operating system. So first we need to log in. So we'll pick a password here that we can now confirm and we'll be dropped into the Windows 98 desktop. We'll just click this away here. And look at the device manager to see if it has picked up our network adapter. And indeed it has. So here we see the AMD PCNet family Ethernet adapter.
So let's check and see what the installer has configured in terms of uh, adapters and protocols. So it has included the TCP IP protocol for our AMD. We won't be needing the dial-up adapter, so I'll be removing that. And I'll be adding the Microsoft NetBuoy protocol, as it has also been installed on the Windows 3.11 and the MS-DOS machine. And we'll be needing that to share our files. So we also need to enable the file sharing, which will add a service here into our network configuration. And after a reboot, we should be able to share files that can be accessed now on our other virtual machines, the MS-DOS and the Windows 3.11 installations. So after another quick reboot, we can enter the Windows 98 desktop again after logging in. We'll open up the file explorer and we will create a new folder here that we will then share with the rest of our virtual machines. So I've created the data folder here, right click, sharing, we'll give it a name by default, give it access, and the little hand will appear on the folder and it will now be made available on the other machines as well. So how can we access these shares from our MS-DOS environment? Well, let's start MS-DOS here and let's see how it works. The Microsoft Network Client Package has a net command that we can use in order to interact with the network stack. After everything has been started, we can launch the net command and it will provide us with this graphical user interface, allowing us to browse the network, look for shares and map them onto our local device here. So here we have found our Windows 3.11 and Windows 98 machines on the network. And if we select one, we can see the shared directories and we can map them to a local drive. So here I've done this for the Windows 3.11. Let's do the same for the Windows 98. It has found the shared directory and it has created a mapping to the local drive letter E. We can opt to reconnect these shared connections upon startup. And as you can see now, we have two local drives added to our machine, which is the D drive and the E drive, which correspond to the local shares on the Windows 3.11 and Windows 98. We can also do this using a command line, using the net view command to view all of the computers on the network. We can use the net view command to view the shared resources on each of those computers. There is a help included with the net command that provides you with lots of different subcommands. And we can also map these networking drives through the CLI by using the net use command, effectively giving us access to the files on the remote machines via these local drive letters on our MS-DOS environment. So that's it for me for now. I hope you've enjoyed this little video where we talked about setting up MS-DOS and Windows-based networking on a virtualized environment. In the next video, I promise I'll be adding that capability onto the machine park here where we will again be working with actual retro hardware and hooking up the 286 onto this little mini network and see where we can take it from there. So I hope to see you there. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.